It is time again for an updated beginner's guide. Welcome back to Cocky Gachas and in this video, I'm going to once again make a beginner's guide because I do expect that a lot of people will be starting to return to the game as we inch closer to 1.4 where more content is being added to the game. So definitely, I'm going to treat this as me restarting as a fresh beginner. What are the things that I will absolutely do for maximum progression? First thing I recommend you guys to do is to follow the Sonatos quest and then clear as much as possible until the later X, right? This is very important because it gives you draws it gives you dust it gives you shuffle donty this is very very important in fact and then of course this comes hand in hand they will require you to clear certain story stages etc etc so that you can unlock the artificial sonambulism you can also un unlock the resource stages which are both very very important However, right, what's even more important, I would say, is events. And this game, Reverse 1999, is in a constant state of events. So the first thing I recommend you guys to do is to go over to the event shop over here. You can see event shop, there are a lot of materials. What you need to do is to go to the main event and farm as far as possible so that you can farm the event currency. Get as much event currency as possible and the prioritization is as such. Go for dust go for Shapodonti, and then you look for the materials that is going to help you progress like the dissonance, right? Very important. You can go for all of these rest of materials. The rest of these things, right, are not as important if you are joining the game when the shop has a lot of days left. If you have more than 25 days left, right, you are new to the patch, right, in 1.4 just started, then I will recommend you guys to do this approach. Once you have farmed out all of these uh, materials for you to progress, you can skip out on all of this, go back to farming story mode so that you can focus on Limbo, Farm out some resources so that you can clear artificial somnambulism. This is the first path. If you are joining the game, like right now, okay, left with 20 days, then I will say that the more important thing is to go to the shop and try to clear out everything. Spend all of your stamina on the uh, farming of sh the event currency so that you can clear out the shop because the shop gives you a lot of good things, right? Sometimes even better, um, outweighing the benefits of some of the um, limbo stages. So I'll definitely recommend that. So going for the event shop, if you are nearer to the end of the event uh, date, and going for progression strictly, going for the dust shopper donty if you are further away from the event closing. Okay, so this is two things. Next, okay, if you are saying I've cleared the event store or if I've focused on all the prioritization, right? Important stuff gone. Next one is going to be the resource stages. Punuma analysis, this is something that a lot of people are concerned with because this gives you the side cube materials that are supposedly your weapons, right? Very important. Every day you have to clear it two times, you get two free tries per day. And also you take note, right? Because people might say, hey, if I can only farm three, right? Should I keep pushing myself to farm four, five, six, and seven? Honestly, this is not a biggest concern because the dailies always give you the fixed amount. So you don't have to push yourself that hard. Try to clear, of course, but if you cannot, don't fret, okay? This is something to take note of. Just make sure you use your two tries per day. Next is going to be the resources. If you are super casual, you'd want to progress as fast as possible. Touch the wilderness, upgrade your wilderness. If not, ignore it until you can clear limbo, okay? Trust me on this one. This is not going to pay off until you can really, really have the luxury to go on and have the long run benefits, right? The passive income. This is going to be the main thing that you want to focus on. And thus, is going to be more important than Shapodonti in the early game. In the later stages of the game, like I am now, the Shapodonti is more important. But as a beginner, thus is more of a bottleneck. So definitely focus more on thus, okay? This is about spending stamina, okay? Of course, you also have to go to the story stages to farm the materials so that you can uh, upgrade your characters. And this brings me to my next point, which is investments. This is the number one question that beginners have. And if you want to know who to invest in, check out this video about the tier list for 1.4. It's going to give you a rough idea. Any units not mentioned are not as good. You can definitely invest in lower rarity units as long as it helps you progress in limbo because it's going to bring you the income that makes it worth it. Regardless, this is not my focus. What I want to educate you guys more is about the structure of the teams and how many units and where to stop the investments for. So first thing I want to touch on is going to be on two teams. Okay, you want to focus on two teams and it's going to fulfill standard roles. Every team is going to be made out of three units. Some uh, battles is going to have four unit teams. However, it's not your focus. You are a beginner. You cannot focus on so many things. This is going to be the next part. First, focus on these two teams and have the roles. One carry each of this team one sub DPS or support and then one healer. So the team is going to always be this structure as much as possible. And when it comes to afflectuses, bonuses, you want to focus only on two afflectors as much as possible. You don't need to have a carry for every single afflectus. This is not what a beginner needs to do. This is a big, okay, rookie mistake. 
because you don't have that much resources and in this game all of factors is still very very prevalent and i'm going to explain to you why so over here let's say that you have a beast carry in centurion and you have a ton carry in jessica so this already enough the reason why is because if you have these two teams today if the limbo is a mineral type is countering your centurion just bring the jessica team over to counter this and then you can have the um, beast team itself right focus on the other effectors meaning uh, start so it's this is the standard strategy two teams and two effectors is enough for a start of course as you progress further into the game you are going to want to have effectors bonuses so that you are able to clear content easier but as a start right try to just prioritize on two teams with the hyper carries the sub dps the rolls all fulfilled it is fine don't need to have all four reflectors are once again rookie mistake don't need to have all four reflectors okay and also with a prioritization right let's say right you haven't invested in any units and you have like Calabuana, you have jessica you have centurion for instance right for instance you are going to want to invest in the reflectors that is beneficial for the limbo stage so check out what afflectuses are the current as well as the upcoming limbo to make your decision if you are in need of making a decision if you only have one hyper carry or rather two hyper carries right then there is no decision to be made just invest in those two hyper carries you're going to be fine you are able to clear for sure okay even if you don't full star you are able to clear to a certain extent that is good enough as a beginner okay so this is the focus as for the investment levels, I would recommend in the order that is shown on the screen. I-230 first, you don't need to go for I-3, I-230 with resonance 5 resonance also very important and then afterwards for your carries you want to try to go to um, r10 okay the next stage is probably i250 r10 for the carries and then i250 r7 for your support and your healers okay healers can even be at i uh, r5 it's totally fine okay these are the investment levels however if you are clearing the event shop you are also going to be able to have access to some of the event materials that are for i3 so look at what materials you're getting from the current event to decide which you need to i3 first this is very important at the start you'd want to spend the stamina on farming for i3 materials it is totally not needed okay trust me totally not needed after that your game is going to get more and more difficult however at the same time you're going to endure more and more events and you're going to get more and more i3 materials for free totally for free and you are able to upgrade the uh, units naturally and if you have nothing to farm eventually you're going to farm using your stamina so this is the order uh. stamina for i3 not worthy at the start so this is an investment firm when it comes to levels inside and resonance at this point you might be asking hey talkie what about psychubes correct psychubes also very important because psychubes give a lot of stats so i'm going to give you guys a couple recommendations including a strategy i think is going to be optimal for beginners so first up you want to have three side cubes unlike the units where you need six because of the limbo structure right they are going to remove your units so you need a second team for side cubes you can use them across two teams if you follow my method where building the teams whereby they have the rows that are duplicated right then you can share the side cubes very very easily and what i recommend for a side cube strategy is going to be focusing on yearning desire as a five star side cubes you definitely want to get yearning desire because this is one of the side cubes whereby it is technically right cheaper and doesn't compete with your six star cycles it's a different material you can see this different boss different boss different shop so they do not compete huh? nothing sus about the boss okay just that they do not compete so for this five star balls right you want to focus on yearning desire get as many copies as possible right do not go for this enlightens totally not worth your time you get a lot of enlightens from the event shop itself already so you can see i also don't bother to care about it it's not going to be a concern regardless just get this this is your first side cube second one you need a healing side cube i would recommend you to use your side cube selector that you get i forget which day it is but you get it from logging into the game use that on inclusive deal okay the reason is because this is potentially one of the side cubes that you might want to get duplicates on so using the selector on this is going to be better as compared to the next side cube i'm going to recommend for your carries so now we have a sub dps side cube we have a healer uh, side cube and lastly we need a carry side cube and for the carry side cube i would strongly strongly recommend his bounded duty this one is the universal side cube that gives you a lot of attack at max you can see but it has a very very weak amplification this is also the reason why we don't want to use the selector on it so that we can make use of the discount that you can use for this side cube so once you get all three of these side cubes right after that if you're asking what side cube strategy you're going to follow check out this video that is for beyond that already okay so this is the first strategy just need to have three side cubes equal uh, level them up 
it's going to be fine. Yearning Desire, great side cube even in the later games, especially for free to play players. TID is the best healing side cube as of now. So definitely go for this and then he's mounted duty, the most flexible one. You are going to be set from a side cube end. So this is for side cubes. However, you also know, right, we are in the shop already. So we're going to talk about the shop. In fact, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. This is going to be every single thing that you need to buy from the shop. Okay, so first thing for this material, this blue blue material, focus on buying uni locks. You need to buy all of the uni locks. Buy this first. After that, if you have extra, right, still don't spend everything on this, but I will try to recommend you guys to spend on this. But also be wary that you need to save enough for the next rotation of the uni lock. Okay, so I'm going to buy this when I have more of this blue stuff. Okay, as for this other stuff, the travel counter over here, the only thing that I've been spending it on has been the HF polarization. As you can see, right, all of these things, bobbles, all very important because all of these are for upgrading your side cubes beyond certain limits. And these are very scarce materials. So definitely focus on this. I wouldn't touch on any of those unless there's a character that you really want to save on then you can probably go for it, but I would prefer to go for this instead. Moving on to our Fragment Store, i.e. the Oneric Shop. This is going to be quite important. For absolute beginners, you might be a bit stumped, right? Too many things to buy. All of this nonsense, avoid. Okay, Sonorous Nail, avoid. Okay, weekly resonance or this dissonance, absolutely do not buy. Okay, so if you need this thing, right, go grab it from the event store. Otherwise, you can grab it from the permanent stash. Okay, these are the two places you're going to grab. Ignore the weekly limit. Next, go for the brief cacophony. Most important one is to clear brief cacophony. Okay, say again, brief cacophony. You are going to be like uh, addict that requires this uh, fix. And this is your drug, Brief Cacophony, very important for Resonance 5 and beyond to Resonance, I think, 9. Okay, so that is very important. A lot of units is going to be upgraded to that investment level. Hence, you need a lot of Brief Cacophony. Next, you're going to grab one Crystal Cascade. That is all you need. You don't need too many of those. This is assuming that we are, of course, working towards R10. You are already going to get Crystal Cascade from the U2 shop, so that's why it is not that needed. If you really don't have enough material, right, straight up just grab Brief Cacophony, you are still going to be fine. Subsequently, once you are able to full clear Limbo, go for one Crystal Cascade. I don't go for two because I don't feel that I will go beyond R10 that much. Of course, in the future, the strategy will change. Regardless, that is going to be enough for the currency. If you have extra, go grab the permanent stuff. You will never have enough currency for all of this nonsense trust me okay moving on lastly we're going to go to the wilderness and you can see from the fact that i place it last is because i think this is of the least importance to a beginner however the strategy is still very simple focus on the event ones first there is a permanent one do not care too much about it first you try to clear your event ones and do not clear every single thing okay just buy the ones that are orange okay when it comes to the lens buy the orange one nowadays i don't even buy the lens i think i just focus on the buildings because I, I even forget to buy you can see over here right buying the buildings right is going to be more important because they do not have a limit the islands actually have a limit so once you hit the limit right you cannot add any more islands until 1.4 if you are playing in 1.4 you're watching this video potentially you can still continue to buy the islands but i will still prioritize on the buildings you will get a lot of islands just from the events itself now of course like i mentioned right when it comes to investment you definitely want to check out the tier list if you are focused on the meta so definitely check out this video over here i created the tier list i'll see you guys over there this is cocky gachas signing off